I am pleased to extend a warm greeting to the English-speaking prelates whom I had the joy of raising to the dignity of Cardinal in Saturday's consistory. Cardinal Thomas Christopher Collins, Archbishop of Toronto, Canada. Before heading back home, Toronto's new Cardinal enjoyed one final moment with the Pope. He was joined by his two sisters, and seated in Paul VI Hall, 200 friends and family members who came to Rome to see him being made a Cardinal. I also extend cordial welcome to the family members and friends who join him today. I ask you to continue to support the new Cardinals by your prayers as they take up their important responsibilities in the service of the Apostolic See. When the Pope creates new cardinals at an event called a consistory, it's a grand celebration. Yet for the cardinal and his friends, the trip to Rome means much more. It's an inner pilgrimage to the heart of the faith. So Your Grace, we've arrived in Rome, mm -hmm. and this is going to be quite the week for you. It will be quite a week. It's uh, very exciting. Up, up here, around the, this corner here, there are some of the major offices like the clergy, education on this side, the office for bishops on that side. So from time to time I've gone there. Have you made an ad limina yet with Pope Benedict? Uh, yes, I did. As Archbishop of uh, Edmonton in 2006, I, uh, I made the ad limina with the Western bishops at that time but I haven't uh, yet made the one as Archbishop of Toronto. As a Cardinal, Collins will be traveling to Rome increasingly often. Cardinals are usually asked to serve on a number of governing bodies called dicasteries, but already he has many friends in the city. Monsignor Jose Betancourt is from Ottawa. He works in the Vatican's Secretariat of State. I always like to tell people, we'll here at the Vatican, we look at the cross, we look at the lantern, the dome of Michelangelo, inside there's the, the, um, the altar and below is, the, is a tomb. And everything yes. points to that mission, the, the Petrine mission, which is what all of this is about, this keeping the tradition uh, and handing it to the next generation. And so we're very honored very, very honored to, to welcome you to, to this point, vantage so point. <laughs> Thank you, Monsignor. This is beautiful to be able to see uh, the whole of the Vatican here with the St. Peter's. Uh, I know whenever I, I come to Rome, I always like to go there to the, to the, uh, the altar, and directly under that altar, there's the, the tomb of St. Peter. And just to think that this is that, that central point where, I think it says, now I may be wrong, that around the dome, it's just something like, from this point radiates the uh, unity of the church. And, and that's, yeah, that's very, right. very, uh, that's right. uh, it's just a, very moving to, to be here. And then I've never been able to see it from this perspective before. It's amazing. It really leads people to things that are uh, you know, so central to God. I think of beauty, truth, and goodness. So those are three great realities. And the thing I think that reaches out to people who are seeking and who perhaps are, are looking for faith is the beauty. That, that begins, you begin with that, and then that can lead them to truth and goodness. And it's just, it's a, it's a great gift. Father Owen Keenan is a priest from the Archdiocese of Toronto. Uh, you uh, you work here uh, with well, the Holy you, Father. As Father, as Monsignor Betancourt said, uh, all of this is exists to uh, serve the Holy Father, the successor of Peter, Peter who's buried there. So I'm privileged to work here in the Secretary of State to be a priest from Canada, who comes from afar to work here at the center. As you say, all roads lead to Rome. Cardinal Collins has shown himself to be comfortable in the ecclesial spotlight, readily engaging with the media and making frequent public appearances throughout the large archdiocese. It's such a meow. Oh, it's such a nice, this is a great little... But the Cardinal also has a quiet side. This is, this is um, 
another bookstore. Yes, uh, Via Conciliazione. San Paolo, yes. I do visit a lot of bookstores. It's, uh, I find it very relaxing and interesting, and I've been doing that ever since I was a little, little boy. Which is your favorite bookstore here? Well, there's one on the other side called Leoniana, which is very good. I go there quite a bit. And then this one, San Paolo here, Paulina, which is upstairs. They have some uh, English books and various other ones. Where do you find the time to read? Your responsibilities are immense. You have to carve out blocks of time. Well, I, I'm you know, working throughout the day on various uh, things that I'm doing, and often in the evening, too, I'm out at various events. But when I, come, I can, I come home to my uh, little apartment, and I've got books piled everywhere. And I, I just, <laughs> just <laughs> and I, I have this little couch I've had since I was uh, teaching in the seminary in London. And it's just nice. It just slopes just nicely. And I kind of lie that way, and i got books above and books and I just read. I read, read, read. I've been reading since I was a little boy. I just, I love to read. Most pilgrims in Rome plan to visit the four major papal basilicas. But throughout the city, there are hundreds of lesser-known churches of historical and artistic significance. When he is made cardinal, Archbishop Collins will be named honorary pastor of one of them. It's a church for Canadians because the, it was the church of Cardinal Carter and now it's the church of Cardinal Ouellette. So and right to here we have his crest up there along with that of Pope Benedict. And by church, what does that mean for cardinals? Each of you has a, a parish or a church here in That's Rome? right, yes. Each of us has a, uh, a, a church assigned to, uh, which you're almost sort of the honorary uh, parish priest, you might say, of a, one of the parishes of Rome, to the diocese of Rome, to the See of Peter, to, to the Pope. It's just beautiful. Right down the street. Right, that's right. This is very, very good. Okay. Yeah. Pilgrims may be surprised to learn that there is more than one church in the Vatican. In the shadow of the Great Basilica, is a German residence called the Teutonic College. It contains a cemetery and this church. The Canadian delegation came here to celebrate Mass on the Wednesday before the consistory. The Cardinals, their first duty, their primary duty. So we too, as we begin our time together in pilgrimage, Bishop John Wassenau, Auxiliary Bishop of Toronto, what was the significance of celebrating Mass with the Toronto delegation in this place? Well, it was the first time we got together for Mass, and it's such a beautiful place to remind us of who St. Peter is and was for us, and in this beautiful chapel to be that close to the tomb of Peter and allow ourselves to put it in the context of our visit to Rome for the Cardinal's creation. Members of the Canadian group were eager to express their admiration for the new Cardinal. Well, it's a great honour for me uh, to join Cardinal Designate Collins. I've known him most of my life. He taught me in the seminary, uh, and as well I was with him on faculty. And now as an auxiliary with him to support him and uh, to strengthen the faith of the people of the Archdiocese. It's a great honour to be here in, in Rome. A little known fact but he was an associate of mine at the cathedral uh -oh. many years ago. <laughs> and a very wonderful priest at that time, and is now too. And what are your hopes for the future for Archbishop Collins, now Cardinal Collins? Maybe that he'll be Pope. <laughs> Archbishop Collins brings a number of very special gifts uh, as a new Cardinal in uh, the Church of Canada. I've gotten to know him pretty well. I participated at the Synod on the Eucharist with him. I spent three weeks with him here in Rome. I've also uh, worked with him on the Permanent Council of the uh, Conference of the Bishops of Canada. He, he brings certainly a great wisdom. He's a, he's a man who knows his stuff. He, he studies, he reflects, he informs himself thoroughly on any question that we're debating. He brings a sense of balance, I find. He looks at both sides of a question and he can see both sides very well. Colonel Collins, uh, since coming to Toronto, I mean, has made a very strong commitment to the board, to Catholic Charities. He is the chairman of our board and has a, a strong commitment to the board, which enables us to do what we do. It was a wonderful opportunity to be invited and uh, to celebrate with uh, Cardinal-elect Collins and um, just to uh, the opportunity to see a consistory and uh, to be part of it. There's always excitement on Via della Conciliazione, the street leading up to St. Peter's Square. But even more so this week, as delegations from around the world arrive for the consistory. You never know what prominent cleric you'll bump into. 
Robert <laughs> Thomas Collins from Toronto. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stiamo facendo ogni giorno qualche cosa per la notizia. Are you already here some days? Or when did you come? We just came this morning. Three hours ago. This morning. Yeah, yes, wonderful. we still have jet lag. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, there is uh, something to do in these days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sala Stampa de la Santa Sede, Holy See Press Office. Have yes. you been inside here? Once. Yeah. Let's let's go inside, take a look. Okay. Let's just go in. Come on in. Uh, okay. Gianluca, piacere, piacere. Ti presento Monsignor Collins. Ah, piacere. Arcivescovo di Toronto e prossimo cardinale ah, settimana prossima. Tanti auguri allora. Grazie, grazie. Journalists who have a permanent presence here, mm -hmm. a permanent office, each of them has a little room. Oh, I see. So yeah. you have like Catholic News Service from yeah. Washington is here. Yeah. One of the other men who will be made cardinal is Archbishop Timothy Dolan. The Archbishop of New York City hosts a regular radio show on the Catholic Channel on satellite radio. This week he's hosting his program from the studios of Vatican Radio. You know some of the journalists from New York? Yeah. Yeah. So, I like you ever listen to the, the uh, classical program. radio station? It's like the whistle. Well, yeah. Archbishop, how are you? Nice to see you. I feel more comfortable. His guest this week is none other than Archbishop Collins. Of a conversation with Cardinal Dolan, the very first episode of the show. I like the sound of that. We well will be, we'll be joined by uh, Cardinal Designate Thomas Collins, the 10th Archbishop of Toronto. Welcome to a conversation with Cardinal Dolan. Good to be here. I like it when we're coming from New York, but I like it even better that we're coming from the city of Peter and Paul, the eternal city of Rome. And this is Bishop Thomas Collins, welcome. It's good to be here. Archbishop, good to have you. You're a brother now in many ways. We already have brother Christians, brother priests, brother bishops, and now brother brother cardinals. Thanks for being on. We've had uh, Cardinal Designate Collins on before, because you were on, what, a couple months ago speaking about Lexi of the Dean. And that was a great one. We got a lot of good comments in that. Tell us again about that one. That's a, a unique apostolate of yours. Well, that's the thing I do every month uh, at the cathedral. Reading of the scriptures, of the meditations, of the have in prayer. It's a way of kind of praying the Word of God, and that's, uh, that's a very a beautiful experience. It goes way, way back in the history of the Church. It's done in a lot of different ways, and the way I do it is just one that uh, seems to fit in our own present situation. Sisters who taught me in grade school were Sisters of Mercy from Drahada. Oh, is that right? And in fact, three of them are here. Including oh, Sister Bosco, who taught me in second grade, so I got to make sure to introduce you <laughs> All right, okay, to them. <laughs> Let's grab a coffee here. Okay. Did you visit a lot of coffee shops during your studies in Rome? Well, there's one right down the street from the Canadian College. I'd, I'd often drop into. So I find you need to have a break sometime. How many years did you actually live in Rome at the Canadian College? I lived five years at two different Canadian colleges. I was there at the one uh, near Piazza Zama uh, when I first arrived. I was there for a year when I was at the Biblicum in 1975. Mm -hmm. This may keep me awake tonight and then I'll be even more tired tomorrow, so it's your fault. <laughs> no, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Two of Rome's most celebrated academic institutions are a short taxi ride away, the Pontifical Biblical Institute and the Pontifical Gregorian University. They're both just steps away from the famous Trevi Fountain. We're in, in the middle of Piazza della Pilota in the historic center of Rome. This place means a lot for you. What happened for you in these buildings around here? Well, when I, I came to Rome in 1975, I was sent by my bishop to study at the Biblicum of the Pontifical Biblical Institute, which is right here. When I studied here until 1978, I did a licentiate in sacred scripture. Here's another one of your old haunts, the Pontificia Universitas Gregoriana, the Gregorian University. What happened to you in this place? Well, this university is right across the street, across the piazza from the Biblicum. And uh, after I finished at the Biblicum, uh, I spent six years back at St. Peter's Seminary teaching. Then I came back to do a doctorate uh, in the biblical theology here at the Gregorian. Um, so that's, uh, I've also graduated from this uh, university, um, although I did a lot of the work when I was uh, uh, doing my work at the Gregorian over at the Biblical Library. And one of my teachers is going to be coming a cardinal uh, in, uh, this, this week. Like teacher, Pro like student. Prosper Grec. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I had... Uh, Maltese, a great biblical scholar. Biblical scholar, scholar yeah.
Saturday is the day of the ordinary public consistory. The term comes from the Latin consistere, to stand together. In this case, the Pope with his primary consultors, the cardinals. It's at this ceremony that each cardinal receives his beretta, the traditional red pointed hat. They also receive their rings. Sull'anello che tra poco vi consegnerò sono raffigurati Santi Pietro e Paolo con al centro una stella che evoca la Madonna. Portando questo anello, voi siete richiamati quotidianamente a ricordare la testimonianza che i due apostoli hanno dato a Cristo fino alla morte per martirio qui a Roma, fecondando così la Chiesa con il loro sangue. Mentre il richiamo alla Vergine Maria sarà sempre per voi un invito a seguire con lei che fu salda nella fede e umile serva del Signore. Nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Accipe anulum di mano Petri, et nova restilezione principis apostolorum, dilezionum tuum erga ecclesiam roborari. Ad honorem de omnipotentes, et sanctorum apostolorum Petri et Pauli, tipicum etimus titulum sancti patricii, ad locum virgo villa ludovisi, in nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Back in Canada, the Catholic community rejoiced. Well, I was incredibly excited. Um, it seemed that uh, it was going to be a while before he became a cardinal. But when the announcement was made, people were texting me saying, like, Nimon, you know, the Archbishop's a cardinal. I was really excited for him and excited for us. I, I think uh, it'll be a good thing for the diocese. It's wonderful news. Um, whenever Archbishop Collins says Mass, I'm always inspired by his homilies. He's been such a great help in the community. And as a bishop, he is an amazing person. The following day, the newly created cardinals celebrated Mass with the Pope. The Mass coincided with the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter. Cari fratelli e sorelle, questo episodio evangelico che abbiamo ascoltato trova un ult una ulteriore e più eloquente spiegazione in un conosciutissimo elemento artistico che impreziosisce questa Basilica Vaticana l'altare della cattedra. La grande cattedra di bronzo racchiude un seccio ligneo del IX secolo che fu a lungo ritenuto la cattedra dell'Apostolo Pietro 
e fu collocato proprio su questo altare monumentale a motivo del suo alto valore simbolico. Esso infatti esprime la presenza permanente dell'Apostolo nel Magistero dei Suoi successori. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audimus dicere. Pater noster, ies incerius, santificere tuo nome tuo, accelia tuo tuo, fiat Congratulations poured in for Toronto's new Cardinal. Canada's Prime Minister Stephen Harper joined the well-wishers. He wrote that a native son of Guelph, Ontario has been made a Cardinal is a source of pride for all Canadians. The federal government was well represented at the liturgies and they joined the Cardinal at a special reception. But it's a way for the government of Canada to express uh, its uh, reconnaissance, the great honor uh, bestowed on uh, Cardinal Tom Collins. Here, here. I will move at the other extreme. It's been a great uh, honor and joy for me to be the head of the uh, Canadian delegation here to celebrate the elevation of uh, Archbishop Collins to Cardinal Collins. It's a great uh, moment of pride for the greater Toronto area and for our entire country, for Canada. It's a memorable event, certainly, one in a lifetime probably for most of us, but uh, knowing the, the now Cardinal Collins, uh, having interacted with him over the last numbers of years, especially during my time as Toronto Police Chief, uh, his humanity, his uh, his approach to issues, uh, he's a great communicator, but above all else, from my point of view, he's a great spiritual leader and a great humanitarian. On a personal level, I've known Archbishop Collins for almost 20 years since he was in Edmonton. I lived there. We worked together on a number of important social projects and more recently he has been a key leader in raising with the government the plight of the persecuted Christians of the Middle East. Thanks in part to his advocacy and practical leadership we are now resettling some 20,000 Iraqis, mainly Christian Iraqis to Canada. That's one example of, of the, the depth of his conscience and the effectiveness of his leadership. I'm delighted to be here with my colleagues to celebrate uh, his uh, gift, the gift that he is to Canada and to the church. Thank you so much. It's just a great joy to be here. This has been a wonderful a time of celebration for uh, in our whole community in Canada and uh, to experience this, uh, the tremendous universality of the church, which we certainly see uh, in the consistory and in the, um, in the mass uh, this morning uh, as we gather around the tomb of Peter with the successor of Peter there. The jubilation continued at an audience with the Pope the next day. But not before one more quiet, solemn moment, 
steps from where the remains of St. Peter lie in the crypt of St. Peter's Basilica. <laughs>